I think we'd probably call it exploratory talk in school, uh, a time when they can share their ideas, work together jointly, um, giving them something realistic to work with, so maybe a problem to solve or a question to answer, for them to look at their, how they're thinking things through, we're thinking about the possibilities, having a chance to reason, having a chance to justify the answers they come up with. Talking science is absolutely vital because the language of science is an entirely new language. So you have your everyday words that we use um, you know, on a daily basis, but when the children come to learn a new word in science, it's not a matter of you hear the word and therefore you can use it in every context. You actually need to practice using it. It's almost like you're learning a foreign language. When you hear a, a word from, in a foreign language, you first of all hear the word, you repeat the word, you repeat the word, you put the word into a sentence, and then you start to be able to use it. And actually children need to do that with scientific words. We need talking for ideas. We need talking for sharing. We generate a lot of what happens through our talk. It's very important to speaking and listening. Our children are learning those skills and if they can learn it when they're younger, they can employ it you know, at a higher level later on. So it's the need to talk, the need to listen, the need to respond. Well, when they're working together in the classroom, they uh, certainly show us that they're much more engaged in what they're doing and very motivated with their learning. And the relationships between them develop well. Uh, they respect each other, respect each other's ideas, they take turns. Um, they're willing to listen, they're willing to think through other people's answers and to respond to them appropriately rather than just dismissing things. Creating the environment for talk is really important from the earliest class that we've got in the school to establish that good climate that children understand that there are routines and rules for speaking and for listening and for listening to others. Um, the staff model these behaviours continuously throughout a school day, wherever they are, just so the children take that as what we do here. Their ideas are always valued, we need to get that across, we need to make sure that they know that there's no judgments, we've suspended judgments and that there's a climate within the school that you can have a go and you might not be right and others might make suggestions or your, uh, your suggestion might be taken on by others. As I go around I try not to answer any questions, that's not my role. My role as I see it is to lead them to find the answers. So if they've got a question I might give them another question and they'll say something and I'll say, oh, is that what happened? Why did that happen? So it's science through inquiry, it's science through questions, it's science through exploring. It's really important for them to have a good stimulus, a well thought out stimulus, something that's worthwhile, something that they value, something that they understand, something that maybe have, they've had experience of. You know, we try and give them a problem or a question that they can talk to each other about to try and find their ideas, share their ideas, and perhaps start to think it through. There are quite a few strategies, I think, for keeping the talk focused on the subject that you have um, presented to them. Um, the first thing is that you, you need to set them a time limit so they know how long that they are meant to be talking about that subject. There needs to be an expectation that they're setting the, uh, the, the talking about that subject and they need to know that they may actually be asked to, sh to feed back. So things like talk partners and sort of lolly sticks, pulling the name out of a hat, can you feed back what were you and your partner talking about? That does two things. It A, enables them to, it enables you as a teacher to check that they're actually talking about what they said they were, and it also enables them to possibly say something they heard rather than something they said, because it can be quite tricky if you pick out a child and say, what were you talking about? And actually they weren't fully a, fully engaged in the subject or they didn't fully understand the subject, they may well get to report back on something that their partner and they discussed rather than feel the pressure of having to say something they said and whether that was a good idea or not. We use a lot of scaffolding through teacher talk, through children's talk and if you hear something that a child said they think oh yes that's really good science, you actually use you know, your teacher voice over the top and you're trying to bring that skill across to everybody. We've got science books where we just have a, you know, the class science books, lots of people have floor books. Um, so you can have those pictures of people working and those little quotations of some of the things that they said that can, that can actually go in there if you do want to record it. Um, and, and I think that's quite a powerful tool. I don't, I don't think you should worry about absolutely everything being recorded and the, the value of talk um, will come out later anyway. You don't, you know, you'll see it through the learning later. 
we're trying to get the children to lead their own inquiry. So we've set the scene and we want them to explore, we want them to lead with questions. So we're promoting question asking and then we may record the questions. Uh, we hopefully we take photographs and things as we go so that it's not necessary for them to have recorded in great depth what they've had as the experience.